good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the um, Township Committee meeting of Long Hill, uh, September 13th uh, at 7.38. Uh, if everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could call the roll, please. Committeeman Dorsey. Here. Committeeman Maringolo. Here. Committeeman Pesercio. Present. Deputy Mayor Ray. Present. Mayor Schuler. Here. Um, so as the, um, as the first order of business tonight, I'd like to introduce and welcome um, our new township administrator, Nancy Malul. Uh, Nancy comes to us from East Windsor, where she was the assistant township manager. She's also worked for a number of years in the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs and spent part of that time as director of the Shared Services Division. She's also a former mayor of Scotch Plains and has served as the chief of staff for State Assemblyman Alan Augustine in the 22nd Legislative District, which at the time included Long Hill. So she brings with her an impressive and broad level of government experience. Um, so Nancy, I think you actually, you started August 21st, so she's already well underway in her role here. So welcome. Thank you. Um, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, Doesn't she have to uh, stand up and do the fight song? <laughs> 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 um, I'd also like to um, thank Committeeman Pesertia for um, taking over the responsibilities and performing the duties of the administrator um, while the search committee conducted its search. Uh, and also thank you to Deputy Mayor Ray and Committeeman Marengolo for all the work they did during the search process, um, going through resumes of 32 applicants and conducting phone interviews and in-person interviews is no easy task, and I'm sure that took a significant amount of time and effort out of the summer, so thank you, gentlemen. Uh, proclamation. Um, so, whereas um, September 17th begins the National Celebration of Constitution Week, the week-long commemoration of our Constitution, and whereas the tradition of celebrating the Constitution was started by the Daughters of the American Revolution in 1955, and the resolution is set aside September 17th through September 23rd annually, to be dedicated for the observance of Constitution Week was adopted by the United States Congress and signed by President Dwight D. Eisenhower on August 2nd, 1956. And whereas the United States of America functions as a republic under the Constitution, which is the oldest, the oldest document still in active use that outlines the self-government of the American people, and whereas the Constitution stands as an icon of freedom for all people around the world and is the basis for America's great heritage and foundation of our way of life, and whereas the Daughters of the American Revolution has served America for 124 years and encourages all citizens across the country to take time this week to reflect on our heritage of freedom and come together to celebrate America Therefore, be it proclaimed by the Township Committee of the Township of Long Hill, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, that September 17th through September 23rd, 2017, be observed as Constitution Week by all citizens of the Township of Long Hill. Liaison reports, starting on the left. Um. First off, schools are open. Please drive carefully. Uh, I'm sure everybody uh, that is a parent is very excited that the <laughs> school is now open. Uh, HPAC committee met and they are recommending the passage of Resolution 17254, which awards the contract to Bolash Landscaping uh, for the Cooper Tombstone Project uh, in Turtle Rock Park. That's my report. Thank you. Guy? So, Mr. Mayor, are you going to put the A timer on me? No, I won't. <laughs> uh, and I forgot which resident had brought this up, but there, there, were, uh, there was a dead tree, and as it turns out, two dead trees at 873 uh, Myersville Road. We contacted the county. The county, in fact, 
uh, address those two dead trees. They were hanging over Marsville Road and there was concern that dead, dead branches might fall and, and potentially uh, injure somebody. So those two trees, in fact, have been removed. Thank you to the resident that brought that to my attention. I just cannot remember who that resident was. Uh, first aid, August, uh, they had a total of 49 calls, bringing the year-to-date total of 470. So they're still averaging roughly 60 calls a month. Even I can do the math on that. That's two uh, a day. So if you see anybody from the first aid squad, uh, be sure to give them a hug and thank them because the work they do is invaluable. Uh, and I know, Mr. Mayor, you were going to get into this, but I see uh, Mr. Sweeney, DPW Director Sweeney, in the in the uh, in the audience. So uh, I don't know what time he'll have to leave. So I wanted to address this uh, right up front. Valley Road, Myersville Road. Uh, good news is here. Uh, work has begun. Valley Road prep work began on Monday. Uh, weather permitting, that means the milling and paving process will start on Monday. Uh, Please plan for roughly uh, two weeks from that point forward, from the 18th, that's four days to mill, four days to pave. Uh, uh, Chief Mazio uh, is working diligently with his department. They will be working, directing traffic, et cetera. Please uh, drive with caution, as Mr. Marengo pointed out. Uh, schools are open. So that will be, uh, will be a bit of a challenge, but the result is going to be exactly what all of us want. Uh, Myersville Road. Myersville Road prep work begins on September 18th. Again, same as Valley Road. Uh, the prep work should take about a week, weather permitting, and then the mill cave will start on uh, the 25th. Again, roughly four days. <coughs> I saw a sign on the Chatham side because we're going from just west of the circle to Fairmount Avenue, uh, and I saw a sign, I believe westbound traffic, westbound traffic will be closed at least initially. So anybody who's driving their uh, children to school, of course, school buses, et cetera. Uh, maybe, uh, Bruce, could you contact the, uh, the superintendents? I guess we should at least let them know um, that it's gonna take a little bit longer to get to school. Absolutely. Um, and, if I remember correctly from the pre-construction meetings, Tom, that's 9 to 4 p.m. Is that, is that roughly the work? The work? On Marsville Road. On Marsville. Do we know what Valley is? I think it's 7 to 4. I think you're right. That's exactly right. So 7 to 4 in Valley. Uh, Valley's less challenging because you have three lanes for a good portion, I guess, from... Uh, and for those who don't remember, we're talking county line to mountain. For yeah, a, little a, little, a little bit past mountain. And Myersville Road is a little, about 300 feet west of the circle all the way to Fairmount Avenue. That's a little bit more challenging because you don't have two lanes. Uh, but again, and I should point out to everybody, um, the county is doing 30 miles more or less of county roads in uh, 2017. Six of those miles, six of the 30, are here in Long Hill Township. So we are very pleased with the, with the coordination we as a committee have done with the county. Uh, and again, it'll be a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, challenging for the next uh, few weeks, but the end result is going to be uh, brand new roads on both Myersville and on Valley. And that is my report. And I don't even think I used up my- No, you, you did. I did, okay, sorry. But, but that's okay because you can keep going because I'm checking things off of them my list that I have to talk about, so. Um, Brenda? No report. No. Oh. Matt? Yes, uh, first with the fire department report, thank you to Millington Fire Department for hosting a great event this weekend. They had the uh, third annual food truck festival. Um, I was only there a couple hours in the afternoon, but it was very well attended. There were, um, and I believe it was the uh, uh, Anthony and Izzy DiBiase put most of it together, so nice job. Um, a lot of the guys from Sterling came, which was nice to see. Uh, people, actually it was really nice to see there were three or four girls there from with Westfield softball uniforms on. So apparently they must have games and they notified them. So people at Little League Field, the softball teams knew to go up there. And so people from out of town came in too. Um, so congratulations and hopefully we do it again next year and have a bigger turnout. Um, the good news is 
We have about, they, had, they estimated about 1,900 people pass through there. Yeah. One of the food trucks actually sold out all their food, and one of them sold out all their food plus the food for Sunday, too. So, and I think they also had to get more kegs of beer from the hotel at some yeah. point in time. So, thank you for everybody for coming out. It was a great time. On to the DPW report. Um, thank you. They got uh, four roads milled and paved um, in the last month. And the one they got that's probably most important, at least for now, is Northfield because the school's there. So that, that was done. They did Northfield, Windsor Way, Summit Avenue, and uh, Somerset Street. So all four of them are done. Um, they've also, obviously, we're starting to do, as they do every year, the crosswalks and stop lines, especially on areas where the schools are. So they're working on that. They are breaking, basically winterizing the lake right now. Um, they're cleaning up the stormwater drains. They're starting to mill and fill potholes. So if anybody has a pothole they want to report, is there a link? We just email the DPW. There's there, a link on the, there's there's a link. A link on the town website. Yeah. If there's a pothole or an area of the road that seems unsafe or needs to be repaired, please go to the website. There's a way to um, report it to the town. It'll go right to the DPW so they can take care of it. Um, one of the projects that's near and dear to my heart, they hold another load of styrofoam down to a uh, foam pack. That's 4.8 tons that we've recycled this year. So thank you, everybody in town, and maybe even from out of town, for embracing the program and bringing us the styrofoam. We also, just so you don't forget, we also have battery, car battery recycling, um, fluorescent bulbs, even the little round, I call them the pigtail bowls, bulbs, they have recycling there. So we're trying to think outside the box. And if anybody has any other ideas of stuff we can recycle, please let us know and we'll look into it. Um, they're still delivering. There's still plenty of mulch available, so come on down and get it. It's free to residents. If you need a delivery, please call and schedule the DPW. I believe they do it on Fridays. Um, another good thing they picked up doing in-house in the last couple of years is crack sealing. It used to cost us a lot of money to have a contractor come in, but our crew is now trained to do it. We rent the equipment, and basically they seal the cracks in the road, which eventually saves the road and gives us a longer lifespan of it. So the, few, the cracks that they seal, if your road has a major crack, there's a big problem. Again, report it through the town website, and we'll put it on the list, hopefully. Um, they're starting, and uh, again, I just saw Randy out this morning, actually. He has the tractor out with the, with the big mower on the side, so they're cutting along the common areas of the roads and trimming back uh, bushes and other areas um, and high grass to uh, increase the sight lines. And they're starting their hazardous tree survey um, around the neighborhoods now. So thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, DPW, and thank you, fire departments. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and, and as usual, Mr. Mayor, I did forget one thing. OVM Director uh, Shane Daly did ask me to make a couple of announcements. Uh, this is National Preparedness Month, uh, and the reason why uh, she asked me to mention that is uh, she implores residents to make sure they have their list, resources, etc., uh, at hand. The federal government has a great site, www.ready.gov, for those who don't know it. Uh, I strongly suggest you take a look at it. Uh, it can walk you through uh, in more detail, certainly, than anything I can do tonight. As far as the Long Hill Emergency Notification System, uh, please, 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 for those who have not signed up, sign up uh, and register your cell phone because we do have power outages and your cell phone may be the only way for us to reach you. So sign up for the emergency notification system and list your cell phone. We won't call you unless uh, we need to. Uh, FEMA has released revised flood plan uh, insurance maps. Uh, rather than go into too much detail on that, you can go on to the Long Hill website, which will provide a link to the Morris County uh, NJ.gov site, and that's where you can see all those uh, new maps. And that is in part why we, uh, we did the CRS uh, study a couple of years ago because insurance rates, of course, will be attached uh, to these flood maps. And uh, I think we went from a 10 to an 8, meaning insurance rates, whatever they would be, will be uh, significantly lower than uh, had we not done that. So that's why we did the CRS uh, survey. And that's it, I believe, Mr. Mayor. You took some more stuff off my list, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I did not Going to leave me with nothing to talk about. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But that's that. okay. Um, moving on to consent agenda. Does anyone have anything they'd like to discuss, poll, or perhaps make a motion? 
I'll make a motion uh, to move uh, resolution 17-243 through 17-250 as stated in the agenda. Second. Second. Committee Man Dorsey? Yes. Committee Man Maringolo? Yes. Committee Man Sergio? Yes. Deputy Mayor Ray? Yes. Mayor Shura? Yes. Uh, resolution 17251. Um, does anyone have any comments on this one? I mean, uh, um, one comment? I, I, Someone asked I mean, me to pull it out, so. Everyone was going to vote no. Yeah, it oh. couldn't go into consent. Okay, so. Uh, I mean, if, if there's you no move comment, it. I'll make a motion. You can, you can move it. Make a motion to adopt uh, resolution number 17-251 as uh, stated in the agenda. Second. Miniman Dorsey? Yes. Miniman Laringolo? Yes. Miniman Sertian? Yes. Deputy Mayor Ray? Yes. Mayor Shula? No. Uh, that was too far. Discussion items. Um, we have a long list. Well, okay, the good news is this guy's already not going off. <laughs> um, downtown Sterling parking. Um, so we've received a number of um, emails from residents regarding the parking situation in downtown. So we put this on the agenda um, for discussion as to what we might want to consider doing. Um, and, and so, uh, uh, Mayor, would this be um, given the uh, Traffic Advisory Committee that, that, uh, that some, is, that some is, guidance? That is an option. Uh, that's, I mean, well, uh, one of the issues that, we, uh, <coughs> that I think should be brought forward um, is an issue that our ordinance does not address relative to parking. Um, we've got a business in town, and we're fortunate enough that uh, we've got a business in, in Main Street, and we're fortunate enough that, that they are successful and they have expanded. Um, but what they've done is they've created a, um, uh, a schedule of operation where the restaurant is used part of the time um, and uh, the, the deli bakery is used part of the time. But they're not used at the same times. But our ordinance doesn't accommodate for that time-shifting situation. So. So they're required to have uh, uh, more parking spaces than they might need simply because part of the restaurant isn't open at any given time. The other situation is the restaurant isn't open seven days a week or six days a week. It's only open on weekends. So, so we're forcing uh, through, our, through our ordinance to have parking for a period of time when they are not open. Um, and I wanted us to at least raise this issue uh, so that we can discuss it uh, and perhaps give the planning board some guidance to, dis to possibly look at the parking requirements for our retail stores on Main Street and see if they can come up with some ideas on how to accommodate businesses that, that have that time shifting uh, hour of operation. Um, so we've uh, in addition to that, we've got another business that's potentially coming on on a pizza shop, I understand. Um, so Main Street is going to be, become busier. And, and, and to Bruce's point, and at least 20 years, Dennis might know this better than I do, but at least since I was on the Board of Adjustment in 2002, and residents have always said, if we can have uh, one thing that they would change about the about Long Hill is to have a, a, a downtown. A vibrant downtown. And we've talked about Main Street being that one location that we could have as a downtown, and yet here we have a few businesses that are thriving, succeeding, and they're having challenges regarding parking. So I, I don't know what the uh, long-term solution is, but we talked about this once before, and Brendan, maybe we can bring it back to the Traffic uh, Advisory Committee, perhaps allowing uh, off-street parking. You know, we have several lots in that general area. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul, maybe, maybe, and I'm not saying uh, I haven't spoken to Father Carton about this, maybe a business can work out some sort of deal with them where they can arrange parking there and residents can walk down to the business. 
Uh, we know we have, we own a lot at the end of railroad, we being the town. And I think Dennis sent us something today. I honestly didn't get a, a chance to read it in detail, whether that's permitted. To but, but Dennis raised a good point that in 2013, a number of township owned vacant lots were included in the Green Acres Rosie, which means they're encumbered by Green Acres restrictions. And all of them weren't necessarily meant for conservation, open space or recreational purposes in the railroad. So Avenue property. Is it Dennis possible that we out. can take it back uh, off the Rossi then? We can try, yes. There is a procedure. All right. And so we have that. We have the American Legion uh, parking lot, which we know we're working on, but I don't know that the parking is what is necessary. Perhaps something can be worked out there. Uh, one of the businesses that said maybe they would, uh, you know, provide a valet type service. My point is that is a challenged area for parking, but it is the area we, the town, the planning board and this committee and past committees have said we want to act as our downtown. We need to come up with something, not just say we want it to be downtown and then the first time a business thrives, we stop them. We have to figure something out. So, so Bruce, I have a question about your comment. Is it, is it that the requirement that, I mean, just because they have certain businesses occurring at certain times of the day that isn't changing their their parking load for that particular instance right it's just that right, the they might only need it for saturday and sunday correct the and parking we, load is determined by the number of seats in the restaurant right. which is determined by the the space right, right? The, the amount of space they have but it's not used all the time right one space is used at one period of the day the other space is used at the other period of day of the day so in, in essence, it's not all used and, at the same time. And outdoor seating is seasonal, obviously. So well, we require yeah. it for the outdoor seating, which is only used for you know half the year. Uh, is there even a calcul separate calculation for that? I don't think there. There's not in our ordinance now. I'm yeah. not sure if there's a way to, to do that. There may be. Right. Um, now we do give we do Benson give credit so. uh, for something like 50 percent for which on street parking. Street parking, correct. Right? But. I don't know if that's enough because we're not we're not creating any more parking yet we're encouraging businesses to establish themselves there right i mean you know the, the the only dilemma i see with that is having to manage you're effectively going to start getting into managing a parking schedule right, right. this this business can use 75 percent of the street on saturday that business could use it on i'm i'm not sure how that would work long term i don't disagree that Something needs to get We're not done, saying it's simple. We just need to yeah, figure something yeah. out and think outside the box. I think it, I think that's one thing to do, it, it definitely. But the creating more parking is the it, 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 as you alluded to, guy. That should be our main focus. I mean, it, it'd be an interesting um, discussion, as you say, at the planning board. And we can bring it back to them if that's if that's what we desire to 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 try and work right. that that part of it out. And that could be perhaps done something in the short term, but. Uh, more parking is definitely the thing. And, and I think if there's, there, there, there might be some opportunity to, to add additional parking spaces to this to the train station, mm -hmm. uh, for example. Um, but I don't know. And, and at the end of Railroad Avenue, we certainly own some some land. Um, but I don't know if that's sufficient. That's why I want the planning board and and, and better minds than mine to to talk parking. Yeah. No, I think that's a that's something if if. It, if the committee wants me to, so, I can bring so, it back to the planning so board. Is, so we have the Rossi problem, I heard. So is everyone okay with we Jack? Should, we should pursue that. Yeah. To see how we pull some of the, you know, and, and I would, my suggestion would be to take a look at all uh, the properties in the township that shouldn't have been on the Rossi. Right. That uh, absolutely. The Rosie. 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 I, I understand I just got the proper, by green proper pronunciation. Yeah. And um, I, that, yeah. Yeah, you know, to see if we can get that stuff yeah, back I, I, and I, unencumbered effectively. It's not easy. They don't like to um, give up things yeah. they've gotten their tentacles into. How do, how do we determine, would the planning board determine the parking requirements for um, the arrangement we're looking at with the American Legion? Or St. Vincent's or... I mean, the well, but St. Saint, Saint, Saint Vincent's... Somebody has designated parking lot. Well, so it, yeah. correct, but we can't go and encourage people to park there if there's an inherent parking requirement the for the facility's operation right that we're yeah but the permitting. use is, is, is well there's storage, no not there's right. no additional uh 
credit, for lack of a better term, that you can give the business because there's off-street parking around the corner. Not like, today, right? But we but, could but change the, the ordinance. Could certainly that. consider that. Yeah. yeah, correct. And we could change yes. the ordinance and say, hey, there's a municipal lot down the street right. that you can use yeah. and if you want to do ballet service feel free to do that too mm -hmm. and the master, wanting... master plan committee has their public outreach i'm sure that'll come up uh during the sterling the so, sterling, sterling yeah, village I, I don't take away my my next announcement okay but you're on the master plan committee correct so no, I'll, I'll, I'll no i am not you're not i thought i'm not on the master, master plan committee. okay uh i don't think any of us are no okay maybe maybe we could at least mention to as, as Yes, I, I, I mean, it's a free flow I, I, discussion. Yep. It's not organized, yeah. but. Okay, I'm not saying any more because so, I, so, um, I'll so take we move forward on the Rossi. Because I mean, I like so Dennis's we'll move, idea. I'm putting it on my list right now. We'll, we'll move uh, forward on the Rossi and we'll take back to the planning, planning board, board. Um, to take a look um, at some of the properties. As far as St. Vincent's, that's private property, so that's an arrangement they can make on their own. Correct. No, but we don't allow it. But, but we don't allow it. We don't give any credit to the applicant. They, they, I see what you're saying. Okay, so we'd have to recognize the if they came with if they came with an arrangement, may you know that's not entirely. It's also true. not a permitted use because St. Vincent's would be allowing a use that's not part of the site plan. I think so. There are a lot of things to look at. Right. Oh, because right. St. Vincent's St. Vincent's has their own parking requirements. Right. But now that they but, don't have the school, but right. yeah, but not but not fix. but not but not during the hours Agreed. of right. Exactly. Ex but I'm saying if they were, if a business were able to provide a, a contract or whatever the arrangement is for okay, so we'll, this year, we are allowed to park 20 spots there. We'll say fine with that arrangement, we will allow. But once, if you lose that arrangement, um, yeah, the only, yeah, I, I, I you'd I, have I, to figure out how to say it was clean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Clean. Well, I have another but, concern: is we refer to the planning board, we're going to get cracked with professional fees. Yeah, but there has to be some debate somebody's, in the context of zoning and, and, and... Oh, I understand the planning board can yeah. debate. But what I'm saying is the professionals are going to start billing us out to Wazoo on this. Excessively, to say the least. Well, we'll... we'll yeah. Uh, and the most I can say to that is we'll try to make sure that yeah. they're not burdened with we're, work we're that they shouldn't be. We're just like all the residents that come in, and I'm, I'm not going to be a victim of that. That's my biggest concern. I mean, I no problem with the, the members of the planning board debating it, but when the other three get involved, we have problems. Yeah, I just don't want to use, usurp the, uh, the authority yeah, of the this, planning board. Let, let's now, take it back to the planning the board. The township planner can take a look at it yeah. as well, you know, so we can do it that way, at least initially. But I do think the planning board, because they'd have to look at the ordinance and to see whatever tweaks they can do to it. Yeah. So you can have, you know, do, uh, so yeah, do, you do, do we have three to go back to the yeah. Planning board. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Board. No, no. I think, okay. I think the planning board has to. Planning board and will. Oh, yeah, they have will. To that. I agree okay. with that. All right. We're good with Sterling Parking. Then. Good. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Energy audit, guy. Well, that's interesting. I saw it was on there, and I didn't come really prepared, other than the recent meeting. And I probably should sit down with Nancy. The energy audit. Uh, has been done. I don't know if we received the official recommendation, but keep in mind any recommendation they did. make will be part of capital uh, for 2018. Right. The library has already moved forward with theirs. They had uh, theirs was a little simpler, right? Because they just had one building, so they already had their uh, audit done. They have the capital allocated to it, I believe, and they're going to move forward with the library portion of the state energy audit. They, so they've already made that decision? Correct. Okay. Yes, they have. Okay. And then we, unfortunately, because we were a year behind them, okay. our energy audit slowed down their process, but we met with their representative from the state, uh, the library director, Lynn, and I, uh, and we worked out, and that was before, Nancy, you started. That's, uh, I should have updated you. Uh, so last I left it, and I haven't heard from Lynn, they're going to move forward. <coughs> So I, I assume all is well. We will debate when we get that official report. We will debate whether I, I thought we did. I thought, in fact, I thought you forwarded it, but maybe it was just. I wasn't here at the last meeting. Did, did no, you it was. It was. In the, it was in between an email. You forwarded it to us. Sorry. Right, but we haven't debated. No, 
No, I understand that, and that, I guess, was part of what this was, and we were looking for some background because you were the person. I will carry it forward to the next meeting. And yeah, so, we'll, so we'll the mayor and I have spoken time. every day for the last week, and then all of a sudden I look <laughs> at the thing and it's on it. He didn't think to mention that. Sorry. <laughs> all right, I apologize for next time. Uh, or maybe, or maybe just bring Nancy up but, to speed and then let. But anyway, we need we need the report. You saying that, which I did forward. So, uh, I'm efficient, <laughs> just not smart. Uh, so since we have the report, that should be part of our packet as uh, background documentation. We all get to look at it before we come out here and debate yep. each individual recommendation. So I, I forgot my. Do we, do we want someone to just give us the highlights as opposed to having a broad debate about a 30-page document or how many other pages it is? You mean somebody from the state? No. Either <laughs> you, like you or Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> one, or, one of the two or both. Well, to For be, the secret brevity, maybe Nancy, Nancy, Nancy could has more experience <laughs> at the state level than I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, Okay, so basically they're asking us to uh, upgrade our lighting. I didn't mean right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I meant for, I, sorry, I meant for next okay. meeting. Yeah. Just, sure, I'll just, do that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. I didn't mean for this. <laughs> well, welcome <laughs> welcome to the way this committee works. <laughs> Nancy, the way this committee works is ultimately in every meeting we find our way to your seat. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I think she'll like that, yeah. Um, yeah, we're not in a time, you know, as you said, this is going into next year's budget anyway, so it's... Correct. Yeah, we're not on a time crunch, so. Um, bulk pickup community notifications. Okay, so this is on the agenda, um, as probably most of you are aware and some of the public is aware. Um, we've had some issues um, related to garbage pickup over the past two or three months, where on bulk pickup day, um, garbage is not being picked up on the scheduled day, um, either because of a vehicle failure or because of, um, you know, because it was bulk day, there was more garbage than anticipated and they weren't able to complete the rounds and get back in time and they came back Saturday. Um, you know, the, from my perspective, you know, I, I'm sure we all got phone calls about this or emails about this. Um, from my perspective, there's two problems here. One is I don't want to find out, and we, none of us should be finding out, and Tom, you shouldn't be finding out at 6.30 on Friday night that, oh, we can't make it back for this section of town because, well, the truck had to make too many trips, right? We need to get notified much sooner than that so that we can put something out and maybe, you know, in my mind, maybe even let them set up an alert some type of an alert system that they send a broadcast message out that says your garbage isn't going to be picked up. Um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Mm -hmm. Actually, there was one occurrence where it didn't get picked up until two days later. Or it was over a long weekend or something like that. And it, it, no, I think it was late Saturday. Or it was Both late, late was in Saturday. the day, so I got the same phone calls the second day, like, well, are they coming or do I take it in? Yeah. Right? I, I mean, it, it's it's... I just need to know, do, do I leave it out at the curb or do I bring it back yeah. in, yeah. right? Um, and then I think the second issue for me is, you know, just one of service delivery, right? We, we hired these guys to pick up our garbage. They bid on the bulk day. They know what the bulk day is. I fully expect them to show up with enough equipment to pick up what we have and not send the same crew that they send every other day, right? That was part of the contract agreement. So, so have, have we spoken to them? Tom, if you want to just and pop up, because I have the feeling when, we're going to give you Tom's, some questions. Tom's coming up, it crossed my mind, part of the problem is that bulk is on a Friday, and that causes some consternation it, about over the weekend, people are away. So maybe next contract, or even mid-contract, I don't know if it's going to be negotiated. Sure. We could could we that. move bulk to an earlier right. day in the week? But the thing is, have we talked to the company yet and given them our yes. concerns? Yes. Tom has. So, let me just comment on your comment you just made. Bulk collection is always the last full week of every month. It's five days of bulk yep. per zone. The town's broken mm -hmm. out into five collection days, so you, you can't really juggle it around. The situation that happened on the Labor Day week was Thursday, 
the truck broke down twice. They notified me at 2.30 of Alyssa Streets, which they've done in the past, that they were going to have to collect the following day. That list of streets was collected on Friday, which didn't give the driver enough time to do the whole Friday route. I was notified at 6 o'clock Friday night that there was uh, streets missed on Saturday. You know, I would like to be notified earlier, but Friday, my day ends at 12, town hall ends at 2.30. Uh, it's still, it, he's still on the road. They can't make it till the dump till 3 o'clock, so, you know, there's, there should be some improvements there. But in that uh, situation where they, they failed to finish on Thursday, you would think Friday they would send sufficient equipment to do the regular route Friday right. plus the Thursday leftovers. Right. Well, that's, that's where I, I met with the garbage company uh, with Nancy today to discuss that situation. Um, they're looking to improve where, whereas on every garbage day, if their driver finds that he is falling behind in the route because it's been the same driver here for seven years he, he, and, and the routes haven't changed so if he's getting to a time in the afternoon where he's running behind and, and there could be a chance for some streets are going to miss he needs to notify the garbage company and they will send another truck up there to complete the route that day so that, that's one improvement bulk days are going to be putting two guys in a truck and maybe two trucks to improve that but I, you know I try to suggest this to people that call because I get the majority of the calls when garbage is not collected that, you know, if you look down your street and your street was missed, they'll pick it up the next day. Please leave it out. Uh, people bring it in. They, they think, wait till next week. Under the garbage contract, in inclement weather or failure to collect, they have to come the next day to collect garbage. So they're going to be there. Whether it's a Friday pickup, they got to come Saturday, they're going to do that. So... You know, we want to improve a notification to the residents that are missed, you know, if that happens. But right now, common sense, leave it out. So the general rule of thumb that we should be promoting is if you don't get picked up, leave it out for the right. next day. Please call us. I mean, I, I you know, I, I have people call me, and I'll explain that to them, and that's all they need is reinsurance. You know, that, that's fine. When I get the email from the garbage company, like on that Thursday, I forward it right to town hall. So if they have any calls or they can put it on the website, if we have time, we've been doing that. But that situation that just passed was two days back to back on a holiday weekend, uh, which they need uh, to improve on, which they said they are going to. And, and, and so, Tom, they've agreed. You've expressed the concerns. They've agreed that they will, that, that, that they will uh, take care of things. Excuse me? And you've expressed your concerns, and they've been receptive and yes. said, yes, we're, sure. we're going to move forward. So Sure. I mean, sure. I think that, that, that's kind of what we were looking for yeah. in terms of the update. So, yeah, right. so um, yeah, I, you know, I mean, the, the last time was, you know, even I didn't know when people were calling me because it was Labor Day weekend. I'm like, I don't know. Right. Do they let the do they let the guys go away on Labor Day weekend, and now we're no. I mean, but, it's but in the end, it worked. It worked right. out, but it and, would and have been be, yeah. And to be fair, I'm sure Tom gets most of the calls. Uh, no it's doubt. Just a coincidence no that. The last two times happened to be in Cornell's in my neighborhood. No, it wasn't in my on, on the front. The one, the, the one it was one. on a Friday Both route. Yeah. And, and now I'm not complaining years. about that as mm -hmm. much as I'm saying so a lot of people yep. knew to call me. Hey, God, what's yeah. going on? And, and, and yeah. I passed along what you had passed along. So, like, the, the garbage is broken out in five days. It's one truck uh, yeah. per day. So averages 600 stops per day. And Morris County garbage has to go to Morris County Transfer Station in Parsippany. you got to be there by 3 o'clock. So it's, it's a short day to do all that. And, and if they get backed up, they need to know now to send another truck up to complete so, but our then, routes. But then, but then wouldn't they know by 3 o'clock whether or not they were they were going to come back? Or would they come back and... Well, that's when I get notified. But, but on that back. Friday, we weren't notified till late. Okay. Uh, you know, the driver needs to notify management. Management needs to notify right. us. But still, on that day, say that Friday, if they notified us at 3 o'clock, this place is closed and... DPW is closed, so... Correct me if I'm wrong, the mayor, whoever the mayor is, in this case, of course, you, Cornell, has access to the emergency alert system, right? So if we could just ask, if just 
put that as an it emergency could, alert. It, it, I know, you know, yeah, it, yeah, that's yeah, designed yeah, that's, for no, emergency. No, no. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a good, now, so guy, it's a good tool, but it's designed for emergencies. Yeah. 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 Really, you really don't want to keep it, putting it, that it, out there. It really, rule of thumb. Leave it as an emergency. Cac, cac, I know. Cac is going to be looking at one of the Fair enough. Fair enough. And the it was a holiday weekend. I could see people being frustrated because you get garbage out. It's hot. Yeah, and then they're going away. They don't want to leave the cans out for the weekend. It sounds like this was these were exceptional circumstances. It's been taken care of in the future. It's going to run smoothly. So, thanks. Sure. Okay. Yep. Um, so, just to tail on to that, um, CAC has on the um, its agenda for discussion at the next meeting um, communication, Facebook, that type of stuff. So, that could be one of those avenues where we Fair start enough. talking about yeah. doing that. So, I think member of CAC is here. This garbage is on the bulletin board. And, uh, and it was on the bulletin board. If we, if it we, is now. It is now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we have, we've worked over the last few years to have better tools for communication. Perhaps we can yep. employ them a little bit more uh, efficiently. Okay, moving so, on. Sidewalks. I'm not quite sure what this is, one is about. Well, Jack and I have spoken. This question keeps coming up, and I don't want to speak out of turn, so I'll let Jack give the legal explanation. Oh, yes, I do know. What but the question saying, keeps sorry. coming up, who is responsible for sidewalks? In front of a commercial business, there's some some along Valley Road that I think we, one area in particular presents a, a, a bad situation. I know where it is. Uh, I did speak with the uh, business, and they're going to address it. But the, the question is, who is responsible for sidewalks, whether it's a commercial business or residential business? So when you say responsible, could you define uh, responsibility? What, what do you mean by responsibility? Who, who's going to fix it? Who 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 fixes the sidewalk that is wobbly? Right, right. So if it's wobbly like, like because of North a town Field, tree, for example. Right. Yeah. Sure. Right. So the township did. Right. Right. So does that mean we're going to? And that's doing, the question. Right. right. Do you have a couple hours? Is this snow removal and well, all snow, the rest rem of it? snow removal? Yeah. We've settled. The, right. We've had that debate already. Right. Everybody has to do their snow removal. It's in the ordinances. Right. So now this is. I think this the, was more about. The, uh, Jack. The, the, there are a number of dis different aspects to this. One is the construction and repair, major repair of sidewalks, and under state law, the town has the option of doing it at, at its own expense at the expense of the affected property owners who get assessed a special assessment per linear foot or by a combination of the two. The town has discussed the possibility of passing some of the costs along to property owners in the past, but has always rejected it and decided to do it themselves. There's a second related question with respect to liability. If somebody falls on a sidewalk, the Supreme Court has held that commercial property owners are liable for maintaining or negligent maintenance of sidewalks in front of their businesses, but not residential owners. The third area, which you've touched on, is snow removal. So you can pass an ordinance requiring property owners to remove snow from the sidewalk in front of their house, but the irony is that they're not liable if they don't do it. If somebody slips and falls on your sidewalk in front of your house and you have it shoveled, you're not liable to them in negligence. But as soon as Unless you shovel, you've done it, as soon as you shovel, you're liable. That, that's right. Then, th th then if you do it, you know, negligently shovel. But if you do nothing, you're not. No. And, and as I say, in the case of maintenance, uh, a commercial owner can be held liable, but not a residential well, owner. And with respect to the initial construction or reconstruction of sidewalks. But that begs a question, right? So if the, if the resident in, in Long Hill, because we didn't we didn't past that is not responsible, but there was a dangerous situation and somebody injures themselves, it's the who town. is liable? The town. No matter now, what. The town, my question. But the town the, may be protected by the Tort Claims Act, right. but so it's a complicated question, but the property owner is not. The property owner is not, right. Yeah, well, but, no, 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 but this is, but this is, they, they I'm talking about, about this, is general, even surface. this is general sidewalk, right? You, right. Get, you get one yeah. square that comes up Two Correct. inches and somebody oh, trips and falls, right? Who's right. so and, the property so, owner is not on the hook for that, if right. I understood Correct. correctly. And, and the, the related question that came up over the course of the past several weeks was uh, sidewalks within townhouse and condo developments. If they haven't been turned over to the town, then the homeowners association is responsible, and we have no involvement whatsoever. 
and, and it gets confusing because some have, some haven't. Right. So, but, but actually, no one's dedicated their sidewalks to us, to, to my knowledge. The Knoll, is, for instance, has dedicated streets, but not its sidewalks to us. What about Sunrise and... I, I think those are just the streets. So, okay. so those homeowners associations are still liable, responsible for the and sidewalks. If, if a dangerous situation presents itself and somebody gets hurt, they, they are get, liable. That's correct. Right. Gotcha. And Tom's been working so, on this, uh, so that's why I'm glad Tom's so, here. So what's the question here? So, so I, I only gave the answer. I, 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 <laughs> I think the immediate concern was around the commercial property, correct? Both. Right. You know, the immediate concern is the, is the commercial property, and I will revisit that. because Which, apparently which we have an answer for that the commercial property is fully responsible for fixing their own driveway, uh, their own sidewalk. Correct. Correct. The second part of that was? Well, I think for all of our edification, I don't know if any of us really knew that answer. Who was right. responsible for sidewalks in Long Hill Township? Is, the is, answer is uh, the township. Is there another pressing sidewalk situation that we need to address? No, just, uh, okay. well, one, that's been addressed. We, 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 can't, we can't make ShopRite, for instance, fix their sidewalk. But if somebody falls on it, they're going to be sued and they're going to be responsible. And that's the? The yeah. basis of tort. Well, right, the way yeah, that's one incentive, and <laughs> yeah, the other is you, for good business. Yeah, you would exactly. think they want their sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, Could, just while Tom's coming up, can I just um, point out an inconsistency in the thinking here? Whenever we had the uh, the um, discussion about snow removal or around fire hydrants, we were all concerned, or four of us were concerned, about the poor old lady who comes out and 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 and, and, and can't do it, and 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 and, and so. But that same poor old lady who has a sidewalk outside of her uh, uh, house, we're absolutely there's no problem with us uh, with her with, with her going out there and shoveling all of it. It just didn't. It seemed um, there was a disconnect in the uh, in, in, in the thinking everybody's, there. Everybody's doing a driveway with a service, or in those cases, they're hiring somebody to come do it. But you're not going to. An individual would never be able to hire somebody. To, I, I, to, I just. To, I just. It's. If you were, I just I'll pay to come I, shovel I up. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll turn it over Jack, to you. I, I just want to get a little clarification on that sidewalks on the knoll, um, because I met the guy and I met with the representatives there, yes. and I did make a comment early in that meeting that because they had brought up the sidewalk question, and I says, well, if one of our our utilities is in the middle of the sidewalk, let's say a sewer sanitary sewer manhole mm -hmm. is in the middle of that sidewalk. When, and that caused that sidewalk to crack because of our utility. In the past, I've fixed that sidewalk because of township utility. I agree. Now, do we have an easement under there? I assume we do. Well, it's within the township right away, the uh, sewer manhole. And, it's, and it's, I'm using that. Right. I did it on if, Valley Road if, years if, ago. If, but, if we cause the damage, we're responsible. Right. But in the case where I have a stormwater inlet mm -hmm. in the road. Right. And... The stormlet inlet head is in line with the curb line, but the sidewalk behind it, which is at the knoll, we have two situations there, they're a little uneven. I don't feel that that is related to that road stormwater inlet. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm looking at it, I don't believe that that sidewalk is getting heat because of our infrastructure. I, I think that's a factual determination, yeah. and I agree with you. Because yeah, that's, that's our question but, on, but on two storm, of their sidewalks at the, the knoll. Stormwater is a township easement. We would, it would still be our responsibility. No, no. Regardless, regardless of whether it affected it or not, wouldn't it? Well, no, because the sidewalk still would. If we had a, an underground easement to put stormwater pipes right. in, yeah, but he's talking we're about not responsible inlet. for the But sidewalk. the inlet's in a road, right? and the knoll has, has turned over the streets to the township and not the sidewalks. And I'm, I'm just trying to make a clean cut here. Like, you know, the sidewalks aren't part of are that. Our infrastructure is not on the sidewalk in that situation. <laughs> Uh, I feel that we're not responsible to, to and, repair that. And I think it's fact-specific. Yeah. Uh, we've discussed this, obviously. Sure. Uh, and all the homeowners associations, they have the right to dedicate their streets to the town. But what some of them don't always understand is once that happens, they're just another township street. And, Correct. And Tom is going to plow it in due course. It may be the first street. Mm -hmm. It may be the last street. Depend. Mm -hmm. They can't arbitrarily make them last. but. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to be there at 6 in the morning like their contractor was. Right. And if they want to do it themselves, we can no longer reimburse them because it's a public street. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's how this all started. Okay, so you guys got all that figured out. Thank okay. you. So, so we resolved Get the commercial to, question. Right, you respond right. to them with that answer. You, we resolved the, um, the null question. Right, and, then, now, and I don't think we have a residential question, but at some point somebody might come. But, I mean, I think, I think from what I've you. heard is that historically the town the has town dealt with it, it. Yeah. but every time. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. But it, this came up once before because remember there were trees and it wasn't Circle Drive out in Greenwood. It was one of the streets over there on Western uh, Valley Road. And the trees had come up and damaged the sidewalks and we debated back and forth who was going to fix it. In the end, we did fix it. Yeah. And now in the end, we were responsible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but we don't have to fix it if there's a concrete sidewalk and there's an unsafe condition, Tom can go in and repair it with McAdam to make it a safe condition. You know, it, we have limited resources and- mm -hmm. As they yeah. did years yeah. ago yeah. on yeah. Main right. Street, which is why so this committee addressed that. So we don't have an obligation to keep them aesthetically keep them, pleasing yeah. necessarily. And I'm right. not saying we shouldn't, I'm just right. saying right. we have yeah. limited resources. Okay. Okay. I, is this, mayor, a, I defer is to this a comment or is this a, one of the Dennis Historical archives. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Dennis. Only because it's a historical archive. <laughs> With regard to residential snow plowing, there was a citation a few years ago. Uh, the property owner at the corner of Stephanie and Pleasant Plains. His house fronts on Stephanie. He has no sidewalk. None of the residents on Stephanie have a sidewalk. However, in his side yard along Pleasant Plains Road, there is a sidewalk that runs from Stephanie down to Long Hill Road for the convenience of the school children who are coming to meet the crossing guard. Technically, that is a front yard because he has a corner lot, although he never uses that sidewalk and is oblivious to its existence. He was cited for not shoveling it because of the school children issue. It's, I would think it's his sidewalk. There's actually three houses that have that issue. Yeah. One on corner of Central and I Street, the same thing, don't they? Yeah. Could very well be. Yep. So we, we, we do have, right, right, the liability is something different, right? We do have an ordinance that says you have to shovel your snow. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Within yeah, yeah. a certain yeah, period of time. Correct. That's so. set in stone. Within 12 daylight hours. Correct. Of the end of the snowstorm. Yes. Which could, in fact, push you into the second day, the third day. Good. Yes, it could. Yeah. Thank schools you. Will probably be closed. Is that a threat? <laughs> are we, are we, are Thank we, you, Dennis. Are we doomed this winter? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, next topic for discussion, um, portable lights with generators for the grass fields at Cantor. Um, so this was, I believe we had yeah. a resolution similar in the fall. Yeah. Um, center court. Yep, we did. Right. Wants to put lights yeah. on the. I don't. I don't see any problem. Did we do this last plane? year? Yes, 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 yes back did. in the fall of last yeah. year. Yes. I don't. I don't see a problem with it personally. Yeah, they're responsible for all costs and any damage. Correct. That includes the sodding. Sodding. Evidence. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. No problem with it. Yep. Yeah. Um, do we want to introduce now or? After? I think since I don't know what you're going to do on the other two, you might as well do them one by one. Okay. So can someone? Someone want to introduce resolution 172552? I assume they need this sooner rather than later. Last week. I'm so moved. I, I move to adult the oh, second. Thank you. Committeeman Dorsey? Yes. Committeeman Marangolo? Yes. Committeeman Sergio? Yes. Deputy Mayor Rank? Yes. Mayor Schuller? Yes. Uh, parking permit fees. Um, it's been couple of years since we raised prices I believe we all got the report from Len as to how much money is in there I mean I I don't I didn't see a need based on the balance to raise right. it other than I mean I didn't see a need either and I, I mean I just keep them the way they are that'd be my preference if there's no need to do it commuting is and expensive I park at one of them and I think I should be paying more but it's just <laughs> me I should know this answer, but what are the current rates? They're right 
Those, those are all the current rates? Yeah, those are the current rates. Oh, okay, right. so we're just going to leave them. Those are the current rates. Well, that's, the, them or change them. that's the discussion. That's the discussion. Do you leave them or do you raise them? We haven't raised them in three years or so, Since right? 2015, I mean, right. It's, we just paved Gillette. When did we pave Sterling? We're going to get a grant for that? Okay. We applied for it. Okay. So we'll see. So we don't know. What's the potential hit for paving Sterling if we don't get a grant? Um, just on the asphalt end, it was about 30 grand. But draining the whole more church was a, he says, very. Okay. Okay. If we don't get it, do we still have to do it? That's, that's a very bad part. Yes. Yeah. Still okay. Have to pave it. Excuse me. Why, why, why so, don't so, you? Can you pop up just so the public can sure. hear your comments? So, so Tom, as you're coming up, how expensive would the yeah, drainage yeah. be? Um, the drainage, you said, right? Yeah, the drainage. Paul's uh, engineer crew is working on that. Uh, it's the whole uh, the, the north the side of the of the entrance going in, because all your storm water from Central Avenue comes down into that drainage and it cuts across and all the water coming off of that the church up there was the right. St. Vincent's there, yeah, right. all works its way down that ravine and it's um, scouring the edge of the roadway into the parking lot and I'm losing the road. So um, we, we were looking to do some inlets, some piping, uh, maybe a curb line there before it's paved. Can we also it, talk about maybe covering the drainage? So absolutely. So yeah, with the piping, it'll, it'll, it'll all be covered if the DEP allows it, so you won't have that right. safety yeah. issue, that open ditch in there. We so, we you know, our department is, is filling potholes and all that and, and trying to... Do, do, you, do you have a sense, if we don't get a grant, what that total cost might run? Not on the drainage, I, I don't. Uh, but this is, this is a different grant than, say, the sidewalk one or a road paving. This was... Um, Safe streets to transit, I believe it was called somewhere to that, and, and there's better odds of getting that one. Right, but there's still a chance we don't get it and have to fund it out of this account. Is where correct? But we right. already allocated money a couple of years ago. It's still in capital for the paving end of it, just like we had in Gillette. It's still there. But not the, I didn't the drainage. It's there. Don't worry. But but Tom, the, 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 the drainage. Not the drainage. Yeah, just the paving. Right. The at the time, that big question mark. Yeah, and right. That. Right. How uh, right. how much more time does Paul's team need to I calculate see... out the costs? I'm not even sure he's calculated it and like really fine tuned it yet. Well, I did to I did talk to him because usually they apply for the grant and then right. and then they're uh, because they because we can hold off on doing this until exactly. we know we from yeah, Paul we don't need what the cost might be. This meeting, exactly. right? True. Well, he's already he applied for the grant in the spring. There, that's fine. Let, let's hold off yeah, on it. Let's yeah, find yeah. out where Paul yep. is. Yeah, okay. Even right. if it's a ballpark, I mean, right? If, if the number is very high and we have to take, uh, calculate a guess that we don't get the grant, but we do need to do the drainage, we may want to address the fees. That's, right. I think, where you're going. Right? Mm -hmm. exactly. Yep. Yeah, I think it's 20 or 30 is still in there for the paving end of that. So, Nancy, if you yeah, could sure. check with Paul, get some timeline right. on that, and also confirm with Len the uh, fund balance is available. He, he sent, a, he no, sent us the spreadsheet, the and, I, and, I, and I looked at it. Yeah, it's in the pocket. It's the, in, the, oh, the, it's, the in, it's in the drive? Okay, the, yes. I'm looking in the wrong yeah. place. Then. Okay. Um, I mean, the balance, the, 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 the balance was healthy, but I didn't, did you see anything in there for allotment for Sterling? I thought it, Len specifically said there was nothing. It, it'll be a capital ordinance probably from 2014, because when I go into accounting, when I'm paying bills on capital, it's still there with the total. Okay, Same so, with a small residual for Gillette. So this is, so then that's the balance after. So the balance has already been moved basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So not the engineer. Do you see. remember how much is for the paving part? Thirty thousand. It was a while ago when I did the math yeah, on 30, it. 30, you know, uh, I, it was grand. either twenty but, or thirty. But it, but it wasn't. It wasn't a, a a big. It wasn't as big as Gillette because it's a smaller lot. Yeah. But the drainage had failed uh, very rapidly in the last couple of years. So you know, we were our department was was going to take on a challenge to do the drainage. And when when I met with Paul's engineers and you get involved with that wetlands issue. We elected to uh, go for the grant and have them take over that end. Yeah, I'm not an engineer, but drainage yeah. sounds more expensive than paving. Well, you want to do it right. Well, how much did the Mitchell cost us, right? I mean, not as much as it should have. Yeah, you because know. they they reduced the scope of work there, so right. it was substantially a lot lower. Yeah. 
on that first phase. Good. Okay, so thank you. We'll carry this forward to the next meeting. Okay. Um, Cooper Headstone Turtle Park. Um, Bruce, you wanna? Yeah, so in your packet is a resolution 17-254. Uh, it's on page seven. Uh, it uh, awards the bid to Bolash uh, to do the work. Essentially what they're gonna do is they're gonna create a pathway from the new sidewalk that is on uh, across the street from Dorsey's uh, pharmacy. It's going to go down to an open area and then there'll be a semicircle uh, of these tombstones with a plaque uh, that talks about the historical nature of the Cooper family and their significance to Long Hill. Um, should we award this tonight, they'll start work in October. It should take a couple of weeks to uh, put the pathway in set the tombstones that are currently sitting over at uh, the DPW facility and uh, landscape it with some, uh, some nice shrubbery and whatnot and set the, uh, set the plaque. There's no lighting involved. Uh, it's all uh, uh, gonna be pretty much at grade. So there's not significant landscape uh, elevation change or anything like that. Just a little bit of leveling where the uh, where the display will go, and uh, there will be no, nothing buried there. It'll just be uh, historical uh, historical yeah. information. Yeah. You mean Jimmy Hoffa is not there? No, no, no Jimmy Hoffa. No. no. Um, any I mean, no, questions, no, comments? I mean, it's, it's, this has been going on for a while. I'm glad that this has been going on for a while. Answer. These tombstones were originally over at the old library. Um, they were moved from. Uh, an allocation previous to that. I, I'm not quite sure why they were originally moved, uh, but they went to the library, and then when we sold the library, they've been sitting down at DPW for several years. So the 18, eight, 13. Uh, since 13. So the HPAC committee uh, wants to put them on display and talk talk about the historical nature of the Coopers. Was yeah. there ever any talk about? Um, I know we do the Memorial Day service over at Central School, moving those plaques down to that park instead. The monuments? Yeah, the monuments. Uh, there hasn't been any discussion about that, no. Okay. And I don't think that uh, those memorials would be in the purview of HPAC. Oh, really? Because those are memorials to veterans, not historical. Yeah, that would probably be just be township committee, right? I mean, so um, I recommend passage of this, and um, Julian, without, if there are no questions. additional questions. So I, go ahead. Well, I, look, I fully support this. I agree with everyone. Mm -hmm. This has been going on for a long time. I yep. applaud HPAC for all the work they put into this, uh, and I support the project. But I was at a county uh, uh, open space meeting last night, which falls under the, which falls under the. Uh, uh, historic preservation as well. I mean, this is all part of one big body. And there were a lot of questions asked, not about this project or anything really, other than there are guidelines that the county has, that the state has, that the Fed has. And I think sometimes we've tasked HPAC into doing things that maybe isn't necessarily their uh, expertise. So I, I you know, I, I don't want to delay this. If everybody wants to move forward, we can move so, forward. So there are guidelines for old tombstones? Yeah, there are. Wow. There are. I found that out today. It, is it because of the historic nature? Yeah. So I'm not saying this is a bad project. I support it, and I have no problem moving forward. But in regardless of what happens, I think what we need to do, we, we learned that with the schoolhouse. Uh, we have to give HPAC maybe the tools with which to do something. They come up with a great idea. They do an awful lot of work. They apply for grants. But then comes the project itself, and who is the, uh, the general contractor on that project? Uh, Nancy's now inheriting a situation where uh, I worked on uh, quite a bit over the last few months, but really Lisa Scanlon has done the, the heavy lifting on all this in terms of researching why uh, things don't work, et cetera. I'm just saying uh, historic preservation is great. I support it. But we have to make sure that we uh, provide the tools with which to 
uh, accomplish what wants the, uh, what the goal is. So here, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea if there were guidelines that weren't followed. I, I, I know nothing about uh, historic preservation. But I, at least keep that in the back of your mind and maybe we need to, to do something. It's a great project that's going in there. But okay. hopefully it, we did it right. Um, that being said, I move to adopt 17-254. Second, if you could, I had a comment. Um, Sorry. Based upon it, the um, sheet that Dennis sent us, the email with the property lines, do we know whether or not this is in New Jersey Transit section of Turtle Park? Or no, not, no, it's not even close. With so the, it's ours? It's, it's ours. It's ours. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Committee Man Dorsey? Wanted to confirm no. that. Yeah. <laughs> Committee Man Maringola? Yes. Mr. Yes. Deputy Mayor Ray. Yes. Mayor Schuler. Yes. Uh, next is. Sorry, I find my place again. Um, affordable housing settlement. Um, Jack, can you bring us up to speed on this, please? Yes, Mayor. Uh, after two years of litigation and one year of negotiations with Fair Share Housing Center uh, that Jessica Caldwell, the Township Planner, and I participated in, there's a proposed settlement with Fair Share, uh, which we hope um, meets the Township's legal obligations and has the least impact on the character of the township. The, uh, th th this was litigation during the entire period of time, so necessarily uh, these negotiations and the discussions uh, with the township committee uh, had to take place in uh, an executive session. But I would like to go through the, at least highlight some of the terms of the settlement agreement um, and then I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, if you go to the top of page two of the, the settlement agreement, you'll see the first table has the township's affordable housing obligations, uh, rehabilitation share, six units, prior round obligation, all of which was satisfied, 62 units, and third round prospective need, 220 units, which is 70% of fair shares experts, fair share number for Long Hill Township, was three, which was 330 units. Uh, with respect to the prior round, as I said, all of that has been uh, satisfied by past projects, including accessory apartments, Lounsbury Meadow, the RCA with Newark. And in addition to satisfying those 62 prior round units, uh, there are also 50, round, 50 units being carried over into the third round. Then if you go to the page three, you'll see third round mechanisms, and, and these are the mechanisms for satisfying uh, the so-called third round obligation. And you'll see there's a total of 57 credits uh, for things that have already been built, once again, including Lounsbury Meadow, the RCA with Newark, Sterling Manor, and Chestnut Run both of which were uh, set aside uh, rental developments. That left a remaining need uh, based on 162 units, and that's proposed to be satisfied uh, through 22 units at Lounsbury. So that's the third time we're utilizing Lounsbury Meadow. And it, extension, 19 more units for the extension of expiring controls on Lounsbury Meadow uh, for a total of 41 units. As you may recall, when the township transferred, or, or actually we transferred ownership to the nonprofit many years ago, but when the township discharged its soft mortgage on the property uh, in exchange, and also uh, gave up the right to appoint members to the Lounsbury board, uh, what the township demanded in, in response from Lounsbury was that they put uh, affordability controls in perpetuity on the property. Uh, so as a result of that, 
we're getting 19 more units. So that's 41 units uh, that we're getting those credits for, and an additional 32 credits will carry over into the fourth round. Then if you go to the next page, page four, you'll see a table about a third of the way down. Uh, the proposal to meet the township's uh, third round obligation includes overlay zones on several specified sites, uh, the first of which is the TIFA site. Uh, the agreement provides for 138 units, and that agreement was, is with Fair Share Housing Center, I should point out. That will result in a affordable set aside of 21 units if it's a rental complex and 28 units if they're for sale. There's also what's referred to as the Gillette office property. It's block 10801, lot three. It's 5.15 acres. The proposal is, and this is just zoning. The township's not building these. Uh, 62 total units, of which there'll be nine set aside for affordable housing if they're rental, and 12 if they're for sale. There's another property on Warren Avenue, block 11501, lots one and four, and block 11502, lots one, two, and 14. It totals 7.87 acres. Uh, the proposed zoning will allow 94 total units, of which 14 will be affordable for rental units and 19 of their for sale units. There's also the Valley Road redevelopment area that the Township Committee has previously approved. And this is a conservative estimate, estimate on the part of our Township Planner, uh, Jessica Caldwell. It calls for 66 total residential units, which would result in a set aside of 10 affordable units uh, if they're rental and 13 if they're for sale. So the total credits toward the durationally addressed need, and I'll get into that in a minute, would be 54 if they're rental and 72 if they're for sale. Then if you go down to the next page at page five, and the reason there's a durational adjustment is the township doesn't have sewer capacity right now to allow for construction of any new units. So if you get a small Roman numeral two on page five, which is a sub part of paragraph eight, you'll see that it provides that as an essential term of this settlement, the township represents that it is diligently attempting to remedy the sewer capacity issue that has led to the township to be constricted by a voluntary sewer service moratorium since 2000. The township intends to either sell the utility to a private entity, and as you all know, that's on the ballot this November, or to bond for the necessary further upgrades needed for the utility. Uh, this agreement gives the, or imposes on the township the obligation to report to the court and Fair Share Housing Center as to the status of those, uh, th those efforts. And also, at the five-year anniversary and at the midpoint, which is July 1, 2020, if the township uh, has not uh, of these sewer upgrades have not been substantially resolved, Fair Share has the right to move to basically void the agreement and remove the township's period of repose. In paragraph 13, the agreement requires the township to adopt an updated housing element and Fair Share plan within 120 days of entry of an order by the court approving the settlement. And that process is further described in paragraph 16. Oh, no, I'm sorry. P paragraph 16 provides that if the court uh, determines that the township's obligation is 20% lower than the settlement number of, of 220, that the township will get a credit of those numbers towards its fourth round obligation. Going down to paragraph 21, uh, the township is responsible for paying $5,000 in attorney's fees to Fair Share Housing Center. And paragraph 22 explains the process from this point forward. Uh, the settlement agreement must be approved by the court following a fairness hearing. Uh, the township will, shall present its planner as a witness at this hearing. Fair Share Housing Center agrees not to challenge the attached plan at the fairness hearing. In the event the court approves the proposed settlement, 
The parties contemplate the municipality will receive the judicial equivalent of sub substantive certification and accompanying protection as provided under the Fair Housing Act. The accompanying protection shall remain in effect through July 1st, 2025. If the settlement agreement is rejected by the court at a fairness hearing, it shall be null and void. What this means is that the whole purpose of this settlement is to protect the township against builder's remedy lawsuits for the next eight years at this point in time. Uh, so if we don't have a settlement or an order from the court, uh, builders, property owners would have the right to sue the township and offer to build affordable housing in return for a, a density bonus. So it means that if they were gonna build 200 units, 200 affordable units, they have to be allowed to build a total of 1,000 units. So it, it's something we've avoided over the years in all four rounds of Mount Laurel. Uh, I think the closest prime example of a builder's remedy is the hills. Uh, you know, that's what happens when you have a builder's remedy uh, with a 20% set aside. Um, so if the township committee is inclined to approve this agreement tonight, the next step will be that we'll request uh, that the court schedule a fairness hearing, in which case we'll have to give 30 days notice by publication and uh, service uh, by certified mail and regular mail uh, to all interested parties, which is about five pages long. Uh, and those parties would then have the, the opportunity to come to the fairness hearing, which would be held before Judge Hubner, uh, since Judge Nergard, who's the Mount Laurel judge in Morris County, uh, obviously has a conflict of interest. So Judge Hubner is handling Long Hill Township and only Long Hill Township. Uh, so as I say, anyone would have the opportunity to object at that fairness hearing uh, to the township's proposed plan. But as part of this agreement, fair share would agree to support the township's position. Uh, it, it's not an ideal settlement agreement. I think it's the best we could do under the circumstances. And, and as I said, the, the motivating factor was to satisfy our legal obligation and at the same time have the least impact on the character of Long Hill Township. So Jack, as you said, you've been, this has been a negotiation that's been going on for a year? We've had, Jessica Colvin, I've had at least six in-person settlement conferences with Fair Share Housing Center, as well as numerous telephone conferences and uh, correspondence and other communications over the past. I, I think that in addition to the number and the location and the density at those locations, one of the real sticking issues in our case was the sewer ban. Uh, and, you know, I think Fair Share spent a lot more time on our agreement because of that and had to deal with it. Their initial proposal was that if the township didn't sell uh, the sewer plant that you would agree to bond uh, within five years in order to construct the improvements necessary to get rid of the ban, uh, and we would not agree to that. Yeah. And I, I, I think that uh, we, we are in a situation similar to other municipalities where a fair share has favor with the court over us and we've got to do something uh, because if we don't, we're going to open ourselves up uh, for something potentially uh, uh, worse. So I think this is the best of a bad situation from what I can gather here. Jack, quick yeah. question for you sure. if I could. Um, let's, let's suppose we don't adopt this, just hypothetically speaking. Yes. Is the top side ex the top side exposure is 330 affordable units at that side to a build a remedy suit or is it unlimited? I, I, 330 but, is already unconscionable, but as a practical matter, 330 is probably the top number, but okay. that's 110 units more. Now the court has appointed an area wide special master, and we've talked about this in closed session, but we need to be upfront with the public about it. Uh, Richard Redding to come up with a number, and his number may be lower uh, than 220, uh, but uh, the Township Committee uh, has made the determination that it's, it's not worth taking that chance. Uh, and as we discussed, there is a provision in there that if that number is 20, if, first of all, that number has to be adopted by the court. 
if, if, if Reading's number is lower by 20% and the court adopts it, then we would get credit toward future rounds. Mm -hmm. but, but in the meantime, it would protect us uh, from builders' remedy suits. Uh, you know, we've recently had a motion to intervene by a property owner, which was denied by the court. Uh, so this will bring, if it's approved by the Township Committee and if it's approved by the court, it would bring finality at least to the, the proceedings. But uh, I guess my point with my question, we are, we're basically betting 54 against 330. Well, we get the same credits with the 330s. So, uh, you know, I think the worst case scenario under this is we'd have to, we'd result in 77 built new affordable units, but another 100 would be 177, plus another 100, remember, is 1,000. It's in the nature of builder's remedy. Right. So 100 affordable units mm -hmm. equates to 1,000 new housing units throughout the township. Is there any timeline on the Reading study at all? Uh, no. I, that's what I, I, just, I don't know, but I think there was. No, uh, he was just recently named by Judge Nergard. Now he has done work in other counties and other vicinages, so probably a lot of the the legwork's already been done, but as far as I know, there's no timeline. Does he have a track record in any other? His numbers are generally lower than Kinsey's. Um, you know, whether they'd be 100 lower, you know. And then the question is, guess. Guess, do we get the 70%? That, that's right. If, if, we, if we reject this settlement agreement and the court adopts Kinsey's number, which could happen, because even... You know, this litigation is going to go on for years. So towns that litigate it all the way through, even if Judge Nergard, in most towns' cases, adopts the Reading number, fair share and uh, developers who have intervened in other towns' lawsuits can appeal that. It's probably going to end up at the Supreme Court. And in the end, the Supreme Court could adopt the Kinsey number, even if some of the trial courts have adopted mm -hmm. uh, the Reading number. Exactly. Some some courts, I'm sorry, Middlesex County, they've already adopted the Kinsey number. So, you know, it, it's obviously going to go on for two or three more years at, at a minimum. Mm -hmm. And who knows what the New Jersey Supreme Court will do. But in that period, a build a remedy lawsuit could win. A development be built? Well, w w while we've been involved in this litigation, we've had temporary immunity, they call right. it. But, but if we reject this, right. we, we may it. or may not get continued temporary immunity. Uh, in Middlesex County, Judge Wolfson, uh, in the case of South Brunswick, revoked their temporary immunity because he didn't think they were acting in good faith, so they got slammed. Uh, right, right. so a development could get built, a build a remedy lawsuit could take place, the township can lose, development be built, we win the battle years from now that we were right, but the development's already built. That, that, that's right, because you know the, the courts have talked about getting shovels in the ground. They're very eager to get mm -hmm. housing built. Right. And it's going to be a long, slow, expensive process. And, and if we go, if we reject this, the, whatever number we start at, we don't get the 30% credit, and then, you know, we're starting at a, at a potentially higher or lower number, but without credits, it's sure to be higher. Well, no, because the ready number could come in 175, which is lower than 70% of the 330. You know what I'm saying? So the credits we'd probably be entitled to the same various credits we've applied here. But, but, so but we're rolling the dice. You, you, you'd, be, you'd be betting on the Reading number coming in lower yeah. than 220. Yeah. Right. Right, because that's the and discount. significantly lower. I, I didn't significant. win the lottery a couple of weeks ago when I, it was 700 million. <laughs> <laughs> Did you win? Yeah. And, <laughs> and if he comes in 20 lower, it's going to have a de minimis impact. Yeah. Right. You know, if he comes right. in 150 right. lower, then so, so but, what's, but we'll get a credit. If that happens, we get a credit toward yeah, the fourth round. Yeah, and if you're coming high. It could probably not. Well, but, but if he comes in at at 250, we're not going to get the 30 percent anymore. That's right. Yeah. Right. So then we're at 250 that, that's with right. our credits. So it, it, it's the, the, you know it's, it's how, how how what what's the likelihood of being him being on either side of 220? What, yeah. What's that old saying about a bird in the hand? Yeah. <laughs> we're, so. we're rolling the dice in either instance. Yeah. There, there's going to be a new governor in come January. So there may be new legislation, there may be a new COA, yeah, well, but I, no, I the, wouldn't the, bet on those numbers the, being The lower. legislature did, is not that didn't do happen. That didn't happen under a governor who ran yeah. saying he was going to address this. So, it's not happening but, with but, the next governor. But, but this governor wanted to reduce the, the 
impact of Mount Laurel. The next governor right. may not want to yeah, reduce no, that's right. Point. Right. the impact. Right. But so but he may be able to come to an agreement with the legislature, but, but I don't think the numbers are going to yeah. be good. But it ultimately has to come from the legislature well, who's, well, who's well, been rejecting well, and all and of I'll our representatives. This, and I've, please. I've said this at meetings with uh, state officials. We're, we're, I hate that municipalities are in this position. We are in this position because the legislature was derelict in their duty and they punted it to the Supreme, uh, state Supreme Court and the Supreme Court ruled how it ruled, and you know we can we can complain all we want, but the fact is this: municipalities all over the state are settling now because of the fear of what could happen. Part part of the legislature, our our legislative guys are pushing. Oh no no no! Our, our legislative our, guys, but they're a right. minority. But but they're, they're the minority. The, the, the I spoke with Senator Kane on Sunday. Yep. He said, "Look, it's wrong. Uh, I apologize, uh, but." There's nothing we can do. We've been fighting this battle. Right. He thinks that the last uh, court ruling was actually illegal. But uh, good luck. Yeah, but right. his opinion matters as much as mine when yeah. it comes to whether that <laughs> decision is illegal. Uh, I, I, I think, I, I, think I, 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 I agree with Bruce here. This is the best of, right. a, of, a, of a bad situation. And I mean, I've obviously been part of the conversations up, up, up until now. And I commend you and uh, Jessica, Jack, for the work that you've done on this. And, and especially um, some of the some of the changes in this in this in this latest, uh, and I think yeah. this is the, in your opinion, and, and I do believe it's the it's it's the final offer that we that we have in our hands here. Yeah, I, I mean, I you know I agree with you. I think I think to to have a number like 54 when you're negotiating with a effectively a gun on the other side of the table is pretty darn good out of 330. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I you know. Jack, if, if, how do we how do we uh, give you the ability to go to the court and finalize this? There, there's a resolution, uh, I think, that's in your executive session packet, uh, which we give the authority, and it will have to be sent to the planning board as well for them to adopt a fair share plan. But that doesn't have to be done until after the court approves it. Uh, you know, the original language provided it would be attached to the agreement, uh, but we changed that so. It has to be adopted within 120 days after court approval of the agreement. So, so that's the resolution that uh, Debbie, you gave me. Correct. Okay. So, do, so do we? I mean, I'd like to do this next week if, or next meeting. I, I, I don't. Do we, I don't see this as changing. I think this is uh, the best of a bad situation. Let's let's finish this and, and uh, yeah. send Jack to court to finalize it. I mean, I, I, I agree with Bruce. It's the it, it's um, we run a risk of not doing it tonight. It isn't going to change. I, and and, and um, we run the risk of it going away, I believe, because, uh, you know, deals are always time sensitive and you, and you strike whenever I, I believe that you whatever you you have what you have and, and, and you and you can live with it. That's that's that, that's the we have no you, upside you waiting two weeks, but we do have potential yeah. downside. Uh, and yeah. that's what I don't exactly. We, we've, you know. they, they, fair share has been sitting on on finalizing the settlement for nine months. I can't imagine but, that they're going to even but, notice two weeks while we let the public review and at least give them the opportunity to hear an explanation from us as to what this is about. But I think I think there we um, I mean, really what we're doing by putting off for two weeks is to say, uh, um, you know, perhaps we're being disingenuous, right? We're saying public, uh, you know, you can you. you you can you can read this and you can and you can opine on it all you like, but we're going to we're going to prove it in in two weeks. And so, I would either say for for the potential downside of not of not acting on this now when we know we are, it's it's the best that we can do. I would say we do it tonight. But it's not just fair share, right? There could be a motion to intervene by a potential developer, right? Well, at this point, that would probably get denied. But anyone, including potential developers uh, or property owners, could object. At the uh, the fairness hearing, you right. know, as I say, we've got to give notice to the world, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. 30 days notice, and anyone who wants to come to that fairness hearing can come and object for whatever reason. Right. Uh, so. and, and it provides, as I we discussed earlier, I don't think I'd mentioned mm -hmm. the highlights is that Jessica will have to testify at that fairness hearing in support of of this agreement. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't think the I'm sorry, I, I don't think the, I don't think fair share will do any further negotiations. I think this is the end of the road as far as, you know, you're free to reject it, uh, but I don't think they're going to, I don't think we can go back to them and say, well, we want this. It, I, I agree with the mayor. As they say in Westeros, winter is coming. And it's 
<laughs> it's in the form of fair share housing. And obviously, as, as Bruce said, this is the best of a bad deal. And usually, I make, I make deals all day. Some I don't, some my clients like, and some my clients don't like. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you gotta fish or cut bait. And I agree, we have to, I, I don't disapprove of this deal itself. However, mm -hmm. I, I, the decision like this, I know it's not gonna get any better for us. Could it get worse? Possibly. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I can't rely on the, the Reading report either, but there's nobody here tonight. Which, and I'd imagine, and they do if they do come next week, if you have input in between, we can't do anything to change that, but I still think people should at least be allowed to vote their, not voice their opinion, even though there's really nothing we can do to do it. If people can come and say, um, look, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. It's, I defer to the professionals in this. The people at my office, Jack, Jessica, who do this every day, and the answer everybody's really, if it's Cornell said, you're basically negotiating with a gun to your head, but at least I have no problem waiting to vote on a next meeting. But I'm still in line with the deal as it's proposed. Mm -hmm. I, I, think we should, I think we should do this tonight, and I would move resolution 17-255. Second. Committeeman Dorsey. Uh, no. Committeeman Maringola. Yes. Committee Member Pasercia. Yes. Deputy Mayor Ray. Yes. Mayor Schuler. Abstain. Passes. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. I have my marching orders. Thank you. Old business. Oh, don't be too. Uh, I have one thing. Another resolution. Um, we talked. Okay. Uh, was it last meeting, maybe the meeting before, about solicitations and the hours of operations? Yes. Um, we do not have that on our agenda tonight. Do we plan to bring that up for discussion next time? Or we can do it next Why time. get that not? I think just because we have so much on the agenda. Can we do it anyway? Do we have all the information that we need? We just basically need to see the ordinance and know the hours of operation and what we can what we can limit. Sorry, yeah. sorry, hang on. Do, do, do we have a? We need to read the resolution in the record, Jack. Or did you? Well, Jack, look, we did it. Did we do it? Oh. Well, it wouldn't hurt in his case. Right, I think. Okay, so. All right, backing up a step, uh, resolution 17-255, authorizing settlement with Fair Share Housing Center in connection with the Township Affordable Housing Obligation, whereas the Township of Long Hill has participated in the New Jersey Council of Affordable Housing process since it was created in 1985 and has satisfied all of its housing obligations pursuant to the New Jersey Fair Housing Act, NJSA 52 colon 2070-301, uh, and COA's rules and regulations. And whereas several iterations of COA's third round rules first adopted in 2004 have been challenged and overturned by the courts, and whereas on March 10, 2015, the New Jersey Supreme Court response to a motion filed by the Fair Share Housing Center found that COA administrative process become non-functioning as a result of return primary jurisdiction over affordable housing matters to the trials in the matter of adoption NJAC 5 colon 96 and 5 colon 97 by the New Jersey Council of Affordable Housing 221 NJ in 2015 and whereas in doing so the Supreme Court established a transitional process for municipalities that participated in the administrative process before COA to file a declaratory judgment action with the court with the trial court seeking to declare the housing elements and fair share plans as being constitutionally compliant and seeking similar protection to those municipalities would have received if they had continued to proceed before <coughs> COA and whereas the township filed a declaratory judgment action captioned in the matter of the application of the township of Long Hillford uh, determination of Mount Laurel compliance with the Honorable Stephen C. Hansberry, uh, uh, quote unquote Judge Hansberry of the Superior Court of New Jersey, Morris County, docket number MRSL 166015 on July 6, 2015, um, commonly known as the declaratory judgment action, and whereas the Township Committee has selected the amount for the Township's obligation based on the May 6th. Uh, May 16, 2016 report entitled New Jersey Low and Moderate Income Housing Obligations for the 1999 to 2025 calculated using the New Jersey COA prior round 1987 to 1999 methodology prepared by David McKinsey, PhD, for the Fair Share Housing Center, which identifies the following municipal share obligation for Long Hill Township prior round 62 units which has been previously satisfied, present need six units, prospective need 314 units. 
And whereas the township has negotiated a proposed settlement with Fair Share Housing Corporation subject to court approval, which would fix the township's prospective need at 220 units or 70% of the 314 units in the Kinsey report, and whereas appli application of prior round credits and rental and other bonuses, the plan includes 77 new affordable units. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Long Hill and the County of Morris, State of New Jersey. The Township Committee hereby approves the proposed settlement of fair share housing, a draft copy of which is attached here too, for a total summary obligation of 288 units consisting of 62 prior round units, six present need units, 222, uh, I'm sorry, 220 prospective need units. Uh, two, the Township Committee hereby authorizes and directs the Township Attorney to sign the attached settlement agreement with the Fair Share Housing Corporation. Um, I'm going to trust that with all of that that was just read, yeah. we agreed on 54. <laughs> um, okay, going back to um, the issue you brought up. So um, solicitations, solicitations, we had uh, talked about that at a previous meeting. Uh, it's not on tonight's agenda. I would like if we could put it on the next agenda uh, that we um, talk about the hours of, of allowing solicitation and the process that we go by to certify that solicitations are permitted in town. So Jack, you, you actually did send an email out with the ordinances, didn't you? Yes, but before we, what, what, if we could put it on the next agenda, I would okay. just like to, there are a number of Supreme Court cases dealing with what hours are reasonable and things of that nature, so I just want to make sure that we're okay. not walking into a, uh, a landmine on this. Okay, so, okay, so. Yeah. I'll uh, add it to my list. Debbie, if meeting, you could put it okay. on to discussion for next meeting's agenda, please. Uh, any other old business? Yes, but I might, Guy might have a better answer because I know Nancy wasn't aware of this till tonight about the American Legion building. I was asked by the commander. Oh, I was asked by the commander of the American Legion to just follow up and find out what was going on. I know we discussed the Elks. Oh, perfect. Grab some pine. Here we go. The awful with wood. You could say that. Um, that I brought up the bag about the American Legion. The commander asked me to find out what's going on. I know the Elks is in the process of wanting to take it over. Just give us an update, and the commander wanted to know who he should contact to get the ball rolling from their end. So, so just to clarify here, um, it's not the local Elks that is, in, uh, that is uh, interested in using the American Legion. It's the state Elks Veterans Organization. And what they'd like to do is they'd like to base one of their uh, uh, veteran assistance uh, programs out of that building. Um, so it's, it's really the state Elks, even though it's a local uh, Elk that has kind of uh, initiated the, the, uh, the project. I, I can also tell you, within the last two weeks, I, I heard from Kelly Mizaki and the state had asked for several clarifications in the draft lease, which I made and sent to her. Uh, so she was submitting it back to the state for their approval. So the state, so she had to put a proposal together and send it to the state veterans committee for approval. And I believe they're the ones who are reviewing the project um, with the input that I guess Jack uh, had to clarify. Yes. So at least in the short term, I should tell them to ch check up with Kelly, check in with Kelly. Yeah, she's she's the All point right. person. Yeah, she's doing a great job. Yes, yeah. she is. Yes. And, and I assume it's going to move, move forward, and they're going to take over responsibility for that building, maintenance, maintenance uh, upkeep, the whole deal. Um, and what they will be doing there is providing assistance to veterans in transition. Um, so if you have things that you want to donate, um, they would be available for, uh, for you to donate household items, appliances, furniture, things like that. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Guy. Any other old business? Um, new business. Um, so something that has come up recently is um, some concern around uh, the up-to-dateness of our tax maps, I believe, and there were some emails that we had going around earlier. Um, I had thought a while. Thank you, Dennis. Um, I had thought that um, a while back 
um, around the time when we were discussing having the county do our GIS system that we had authorized Paul to do a bit of work around updating the tax maps. Um, and I think the issue was that um, what I learned today was that he did that. There was some back and forth that they were having as far as being able to get those maps certified. Um, the firm that we dealt with or the state dealt with is no longer in business. So Paul has now, if I understand correctly, resubmitted that for certification. So we should be getting some certified tax maps back, back soon. Um, in the interim, I think the link has been turned off on the website. So there's a section on the homepage that says under construction. Doesn't look very nice. That's the old tax link, but we didn't want people looking up bad information. So, but shouldn't the, I, shouldn't those uh, tax maps be digitized anyway so that they can be loaded into Spatial Logic? Can Can I answer that? Actually? Please, because I spoke with Paul about mm -hmm. that. Um, yes, he is. They're really two separate issues. So he is waiting to get certification of the tax maps from the state. Um, there was an email that just came in right before the meeting started from him. We might have heard something back. Um, I didn't have a chance to read it. But that's a separate issue because what he said is those digitized um, parcel maps that were that are on SDL were from the original tax map. So as the tax maps get updated, what Paul would have to do is have access to their digital parcel maps and then every year work to update them. He said that is a long and expensive <coughs> process. So um, it's, not a, it's not as easy as just, um, you know, you put something online. It's, it's a big process that would be very expensive is what he said. So the reason we took it down originally is because we had gotten some information that it was inaccurate. Mm -hmm. So we took it down until we figured out what was going on. Um, now that we figured out what was going on, and this is a decision for all of you to make um, about how, how much money you want to spend to get this done, I was thinking that maybe we could have Jack put a disclaimer up, put it back up so people have access to look at it to get a general idea of the property but have Jack put a disclaimer up saying, which we should probably have anyway, that you know if they're going to use this for a legal um, basis, like a 200-foot map or whatever, that it's not, you know, 200-foot notification for planning board, that it's not valid for that. It may not be legally accurate, and it's for informational purposes only. I mean, Jack, come up with the wording, but at least that way we could put it back up, and people are aware that it might not be 100% accurate while you have a discussion about where you want to go next with, you know, once we get those certified tax maps and you can decide whether or not you want to Paul to go forward with updating it every year. Comments? I, I think that's fine. Um, I think we need to get there, but so let's put the maps back up, let's put the disclaimer and let's uh, figure out what it's going to cost and talk about uh, moving forward. Do we, do we want Paul to come to the next meeting to discuss this? Sure. I and mean, I'm, I'm, I, I guess, you know, when I first saw the email thread, uh, I was a little, a little confused, right? I mean, he's, we have updated tax maps to get certified, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, why is... The, the process, um, so the way he explained it to me, and this is not my area of expertise, so I'm just going to repeat what, what Paul said. He said that when SDL took the original tax maps, tried to make them into a partial map, all the pieces don't quite fit together, so they want to make it look nice, they stretch some things out, they're not totally accurate. They're trying to make, so when you overlay them with an aerial view, they don't quite match up okay. and they don't really match the tax map. He would have to so what's there is from the original tax map. So as the tax map gets updated, the parcel map that SDL did originally is not updated because they won't do it. It's not part of their, I guess, contract. So Paul would be Paul would be the one who would have to go in and take the hand-drawn ha tax map and coordinate it to the digital parcel map, actually coordinate the digital parcel map to the hand-drawn tax map every year. So it's 
Right, but once it's okay. digital, then it's done. Every year, though, yeah. it would have he to can't, continually he can't be sit, done. They can't be hand drawing a tax map. Well, that's what he said. I mean, I don't Do really know. Do they really still hand But even if it is, it's not digital. All right. Well, well, so what, he can explain it better, let, so let, if let, we bring Yeah, him let's, in. Let's, let's, let's either bring him in or let's do some research over the next yep. two weeks to see what maybe, maybe we need to... It sounds like maybe we need to have SDL rethink how they did it because maybe they just did it that way because that's all we had at the time. I I, I don't know, so we'll we'll yeah. we'll find out. All right, and then we'll take it from there. But in the interim, we'll we'll do the disclaimer thing and we'll put that information back up. Um, any other new business? I do. Um, there have been uh, a number of uh, folks that have come up to me and asked if we could develop a ATV track uh, for people to use in this town. Um, so I'd like to understand if we permit it, number one, um, what the insurance and liability ramifications might be <clears throat> and some of the potential locations for something uh, like this. I can speak to that as well. Um, I spoke to, when you contacted me, I spoke to our risk manager, um, who in turn spoke to the GIF, and uh, they don't insure ATV tracks, and, and I was waiting to email you back because you <coughs> were supposed to be sending me, um, they actually put out a directive, I guess within the last week or two, so this is kind of timely, saying that they will not insure any ATV tracks. I was waiting until I got that so I could get the exact wording, but I hadn't gotten it by the time of the meeting. So if we were, if we wanted to do this, we would have to go outside the GIF for insurance purposes? Yes, and the risk manager suggested that you don't do that. Uh, I can tell you this. When my brother was working in Baltimore, a lot of the severe head trauma cases that were coming out of the hospital were from ATVs in Western Maryland, and he said it was a constant flow of them. Yeah. I would, I wouldn't want to be any part of it. It looks fun, and other people that does it, great, but I wouldn't want to be liable for it, I'll tell you that. I, I was in the ER on Labor Day weekend from an ATV, so <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how I was on crutches for a week and a half. <laughs> and, and frankly, it was as innocuous as getting off the ATV. It yeah. wasn't even like I fell off while riding. Yeah. Just, I got off So you're a is what you're yeah, saying? Basically, yeah. yeah. You told me you were saving somebody, and that's yeah. how it happened. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack, I'm just going to assume that we can't not have insurance, right? I mean, uh, is, but you can. Well, okay, but we, but we, but we are, but we are ultimately still liable for any injury that might occur. Uh, yes. In 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 the wilderness. Liability doesn't depend on insurance coverage. Yes. Right. Collecting is another issue. Yes. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, can't they, don't they have to go sue Mother Nature? I mean, <laughs> yeah. all right. Great idea though, Bruce. Well, you know, I'll tell them, hey, listen, you want us to raise your taxes? I guess, you know, we can cover it. Any, any other new business? Uh, announcements, October 28th, um, Friends of the Library Shredding Fundraiser from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, any questions, email longhillfol at gmail.com. Um, wastewater meetings. Um, there's been a lot of activity um, and informational sessions regarding the um, wastewater referendum. Um, we had one yesterday. Um, unfortunately, it, the, 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 the timing of when the schedule was finalized versus came after we had our last meeting and after we sent the newsletter out to print. So, and I think the flyers only got to people's houses yesterday. So, so yesterday's meeting was rather light. Um, we've spoken with New Jersey American. We plan on adding an additional one um, at some point in the evening um, to make up for that one. Um, however, there are currently scheduled um, sessions with New Jersey American on October 7th at 2 p.m. at town here in Town Hall, October 17th at 2 p.m., um, October 30th at 10 a.m., um, and as I said, we, we're, we're going to add one more, but we haven't 
um, defined a date yet for that. Um, so those are, you know, one of those is a Saturday, one of those is during the week in the morning. So we've, we've tried to schedule things so that, you know, cognizant the different people have different responsibilities with their jobs. Um, we are actually meeting um, with the folks over at Sunrise um, on September 19th um, at their clubhouse from 8 to 9.30. If you guys don't already know, we will be there. Um, the senior center we're working on, I believe. Yeah, October. we were trying for next week, Mr. Mayor, but it didn't work out for the NJ American Water okay. folks. You and I may still go to the seniors. Yep. I, I have to speak with the president, Marie Kulbush. Uh, so we may go next week anyway, but okay. NJ American Water will not be there. So we're trying to set up something with the seniors uh, for October 18th. And I think that is a nice segue into any group in town that would like representatives uh, from NJ American yep. Water and the mayor and, and, and maybe one mm -hmm. other of the township committee members to go, uh, will happily do it. I think Bruce is working with uh, the Moms Club. Yep. Uh, so any group out there that would like uh, you know, a smaller setting directed uh, to them, the information is the same, yep. but that way you don't have to make it to one of the town hall meetings. Uh, we can do that. Um, have we spoken to Lounsbury? I have not. Can, can we? Because Lounsbury, they're all, uh, didn't the sewer bill get paid by the town or by Lounsbury itself, not the residents? No, but the residents are still voting. Oh, true. And the, resi the residents right. should be informed. True. Mm -hmm. Right? So could, let, let's check <laughs> and see if we could set something up to go there and be there. Um, this last piece for the meetings, and that is ah, master. You took all my paving comments out. Um, master plan um, uh, meetings for the Sterling and Millington elements. Um, they are being run by the Morris County Economic Development Group. Um, the um, the planning public slash public discussion is going to be September 28th um, at the Senior Center from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Um, and for the Millington... Seven, seven. Start at 7.00. 7 to 7.30. I, I have seven the flyer said 7.30. I'm, I'm, I'm only going by the flyer. All right, be, be there early. The Senior right. Center will be happy to serve coffee. <laughs> um, and Millington will be on October 5th from 7.30 to 9.30. Dennis, you think that's seven as well, the second one? Well, that's all the logistics Yeah, we have one more meeting, a uh, township meeting. And yes, I think we, we do, but the echoes to, to put that in the paper. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I have 7.30, and I'm looking at the flyers, three flyers, 7.30 to 9.30. So I, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with that and stick with it. So, um, and you already spoke about the new flood insurance map. So that's all I have. Uh, this time I'll open the meeting to the public. Don't all run up in once. Seeing none. Close the meeting to the public, and I believe, motion to adjourn. I believe we need a motion. Oh, so no, we're going to come back and return into no, exec. No action, right? We're not going to no return action. and take any action. And we're not returning and taking any action. So moved. We have to. Make All those in motion. favor? Aye. So, so did, did we have a second? Yeah, I second. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.